What's up guys, it's Casey here, and today I'll be going through my farming route for legendaries, and also just normal materials, just like the farming path that I like to use, um, just for getting started up on a PvP server, and also just like for continued farming. So the first thing I like to do when I get onto an official server, and I'm starting from scratch, I like to move up and get the Yogg religion. I usually start with the Decato religion, so I can run up here and get the Yogg. I can also then go to Dregs, get the Obelisk here. And you can also get the weapon recipe, that's just over here for Defari weapons, which isn't really that useful anymore. Um, it used to be kind of handy to have it early game. Um, but generally, I'll go straight to legendary weapons because you can just buy them or you can just kill a, kill a croc or whatever you want to do. But I'll come up here, I'll tune the bracelet. And then what I like to do is I'll then track across here. I'll get the sorcery unlock. I don't really bother with unlocking the unnamed city obelisk at this point. Uh, because I'll be farming that later and I'll, I'll end up unlocking it anyway. So I go here, I get the Tome of Jurak along the sorcery. Uh, I like to go to the sinkhole, because near the sinkhole there's also the summoning place. And I go to the sum summoning place, I climb up here, jump down here, and there's a recipe for foods just here. And then I'll go to the obelisk over here. And now, as you may know, in Age of War, recipes aren't level gated anymore. So you can go down here. What I like to do is leave a bedroll up here. I'll remove my bracelet if I've got items on my body that I want to keep. And then when I respawn, I'll jump down, I'll climb down the pillars, activate the recipe, and then I can just pull bracelet again, respawn at my bedroll, pick up my items, and be on my way. From there, I like to go to Mechamosis, Greetings, Exile. where I can learn Set. We'll meet again. Have and seen also, it. I can buy a Black Blood tool and a Legendary weapon. Now, if you want a video for the Blood Crystal Golems locations, uh, Flirts did a good video on a, a few of the primary locations. From there, I head over to the Southern Aqueduct, and I'll go through here, through Weaver's Holiday, to get the Zath Religion. And the teacher is just over here. And it's also good because there's Crystal in this cave, and now that you have a legendary weapon and you have a tool, if you get a hatchet or a pick, then you can get some quick levels from this cave. Um, if you get a sickle, then you'll want to farm mushrooms. From there, I then head over to the Mitra religion. Blessings of Mitra, the upon Mitra you religion. Are you coming There's also the another cooking recipe up here. And now this one is not as important as it used to be because um, you can get the bestial memory uh, potion uh, just from the, the cauldron unlock now. Um, and what I'll do on the way here is I'll farm a bit of feral flesh so Arun I can learn the recipe to me and I can also coming. buy a midnight potion on the go. You return, no and so because there's no map room, like there might not be map rooms here and, and you don't have the obelisk here, this is the quickest way to get to Sephamru. So I just chug this. Go through here, and now I'm at Sepamaru. Uh, but then I'll head over to Clail Stronghold, where I'll unlock the obelisk. Now from Clails, I'll then head north to the Mounds of the Dead to get that obelisk. And there are also a few important recipes to get from here as well. There's Crimson Lotus here, which can be used to make agility damage potions. We'll get this obelisk. Um, if, if you're into brewing, then there's also a brewing recipe here. I usually don't really, I, I don't think I've ever used brewing. But you'll get a recipe in this room just here. Specialist cooking four. You see the obelisk there, you just come over here and it's in this big building here. And then also if you go, there are the three buildings here. If you just go to this building over here. Go inside here, there's another recipe here. Just cooking three. Um, now the only other important cooking recipes um, that I really worry about uh, are the ones over here and over here. 
which I usually get a bit later because they're not on my way up to Black Ice. And unless I get a sickle from Mechamosis, Black Ice is the goal uh, for farming up quickly. Now, once I've gotten the recipes and the obelisk from Mounds of the Dead, I'll then head up this ridge. And up here, we're going to get our last religion, and that is Ymir. So you just follow this pathway up, box of this frost trident. Mm. And now I have God, all the religions. Just by starting the Keto, because the Keto religion is all the way over here. And the rest you can just do this zigzaggy route and got all the other ones. I'll then climb up here, start farming black ice, ice for levels, and then there's also a um, a blood crystal golem that spawns up here. Uh, from there I'll then head along this ridge, just keep farming the ice, farming the black ice, up until this point, where I'll then slide down the mountain. And I'll head over to the obelisk over here. Activate this obelisk. There's more ice outside the temple. There's a recipe for totem poles if you want it over here. And then yeah, that's my my starter run. That's that's what I do to level up from scratch if I don't have any help. Obviously, it's easier if I can get gear off of allies um, or just some some friendly neighbors. Um, Give me some cold resist gear, but this can also all be survived um, just with weak ally potions. Um, just make a bunch of weak ally potions and a torch, and you'll be able to survive this. Um, it's only once you come up to here that it gets really bad. Uh, it can be a bit of it can be a bit difficult to find the black ice over here. Um, you just got to kind of run around all the NPCs, and what I'll do is uh, once I start freezing to death. Um, I'll just pop around here and you can jump onto this ledge here and you won't take cold damage anymore. You'll only be very cold. And so yeah, I'll just farm all around here and hopefully get level 60. Uh, making sure to put points into expertise first uh, with efficient harvest so I'm getting the most resources I can which means I'm getting the most XP I can per hit. Uh, now once I've got level 60 and I've got a little bit of a base down this area of the map is prime time for farming there are some things you want to do over the east side of the map you want to collect the two obelisks um, you want to get some black lotus um, and you'll also want to unlock the Lemurian pike that's over here um, from the celestial plaza you'll do the witch queen dungeon just in there and you'll get the Lemurian Pike and the Lemurian Sword unlock. Um, in my opinion, they are better than the Ancient Lemurian Pike and the Ancient Lemurian Sword now, uh, because you can apply poison to them and they are cheaper to craft. Uh, they don't require the scales of Dagon to craft. And because Cripple is kind of useless in Age of War with the current stamina system, um, I'd say poison has a lot more value. So the weapons you unlock here, they are the same damage values as the ancient weapons. Um, but you can apply poison because they don't have a double cripple effect. So I'll go here, this is a super easy dungeon to do. I'll get that unlock. Um, but apart from that, uh, there's not there's not like there's not a huge reason to be going back here often um, as you are leveling up. I'll maybe do it to get silk from the silk wood. Um, if I don't want to do it around the, the uh, near the summoning place i'll get black lotus but apart from that uh, uh, there's not much reason to visit so the main area that i'll be farming uh to get up and leveled is this area of the map here this is where all the best most profitable stuff is located so we're going to start with the most obvious one that is mechmos spire um obviously because as you go around the map um, like in the volcano, up in the ice, you'll get high tier blood crystal golems. So you'll get a quite a large yield from them. Um, so you'll be able to buy quite a few um, caches off the bat, which is going to give you obelisk coins. And then now that it's likely rotated to another tool now and another set of weapons, you'll be able to buy whatever's next. And then you'll be able to buy some more legendary weapons to help you get started. 
and you'll be able to buy worker thralls. Now, speaking of worker thralls, sometimes you'll get really unlucky and you'll get like a bunch of the same one. Um, what I found is I'll like have to spend so much obelisk just to get an alchemist. I'll tell you a little trick. This is the one reason I go back here, um, but it, but I'll only go back once. I'll go back to the jungle because there are some recipes to unlock here from the Pirate Queen. You get learn Stygian Alchemy. Uh, you can also buy that, but that's not worth anything. But yeah, we'll learn Stygian Alch Alchemy, um, and that gives a, a a temperature resist potion. But what I'll do is I'll farm up a bunch of gold. And I'll talk to this Xena the Vixen. And you can buy alchemists. And the alchemists range from tier 2 to tier 4 named alchemists. Um, so you can buy a bunch of these. They're not really going to go to waste because you can you can have a bunch of cauldrons pumping out shit. And you're going to use most of them. I did this on official recently. And I got about 3 tier 4 named alchemists. Um, probably like 5 tier 3 and then like 10 tier 2 um, and I just ended up throwing away all the tier 2's and just keeping the tier 3's and tier 4's um, but I'd say this is like it's obviously a much more reliable way to get alchemists and get the, the alchemy bench recipes that you want which are oil primarily and also um, being able to fill up flasks with water uh, with an alchemist is really good um, so this is where I'll go to get alchemists if Mechamosis has been a pain and not giving me an alchemist. But to get all my basic starter tier 4 uh, workers, this is where I'll go. And then here you'll get the supply materials. Um, and this is where you can get bulk iron and steel. So you don't have to be crafting steel. It, it's really cost, of, uh, cost efficient to do it this way. And you'll want to be keeping an eye on what's on rotation here. And um, always picking up uh, the good legendaries when you can. And even picking up the bad legendaries because you can dismantle them into uh, star metal bars. If you don't have time to farm star metal. The other cool thing about this is most legendary weapons are classified as star metal weapons. Which means that golems are weak to them. You can pick up a bell, a bell Pator's Razor when it's on rotation here. And once you have 20 agility and rolling thrust, you can use roll into the greatsword heavy attack. And you'll actually chunk like 50% of the HP of the golems in this dungeon. So this dungeon is really easy to run. And you don't even need like to worry about weapon attachments and all that shit. Like you can run this dungeon really early on really easily. Um... Just as long as you get like a half decent legendary weapon. And that way once you have a, a black blood <coughs> pick. Um, hopefully with some oil on it. If you can get the oil that's really good. Um, you'll just be pumping out obelisks. You'll be pumping out resources with this. You get alchemical base. You get steel fire from this. Gold, silver. It's a really good economy booster for starting off. Um, the second area that's really profitable is Klaels, or the Warmaker Dungeon. Now here, what you'll want to be farming, primarily, is Maudlin, the spear here, where with an attachment, Master Weapon Fitting, you get 72 damage and 21 armor pen. Now you'll want to go through the green door on the left here. Clear these skeletons. And then you'll come to this guy. And this guy has a 1 in 4 chance to drop a Maudlin. There you go, got a Maudlin. And so that's how you're going to farm the, the best strength spear in the game. Uh, what you can also do is farm the rest of these giant kings at least once. Collect all the statues. You'll get a buff from here. And then do this one. The last room will go through here. Yeah. And now once we get this, so we have all the statuettes. Take the statuettes over here and you'll place them in these three slots here. 
and that'll give you the inner sanctum key which is, allows you to go through this door and what you'll want to farm in here is the blue three skull skeleton which go through here and around to the left this guy drops the key to the arena, but he also has a chance to drop either the Annihilator or Worldbreaker. So that time he didn't drop either weapon, just the key to the arena, but there is a chance that he drops one of those two weapons. And while they're not the best weapons, I don't think they're like meta weapons. Um, yeah, while I don't think that these are, are meta weapons, um, they are still really good. They've still got really good stats. Um, I think the meta right now is Spear, Great Axe, and Bow. Um, I think the, the hammer and the, the greatsword are just a bit slow at the moment. So in general, I'd say it's only really worth farming this dungeon for the Maudlin Spear. Um, and obviously you want to do the whole thing to get the, the master weapon fittings and the master like armor fittings as well. Uh, but apart from that, I'd only be farming that green room there for the Maudlin Spear. Uh, moving on to the next area to farm, and that is in Sepmaru, so it's right next to Quail's Stronghold. And it is the Wine Cellar Dungeon. You just come around to the back of Conan's Bar, there's a door here, it'll take you to the Wine Cellar Dungeon. Now, this is... I, I believe this is like the end game dungeon. Um, so you want, you want to... You know, if you want to get through it easily... You will want to be in a decent kit. Um, bring a torch as well because at night it, it is impossible to see anything. So now the first thing that you'll want to be farming in here is the Kari steel. And there'll be little chests around here that spawn. And uh, when you pick them up you'll get like one to three Kari steel I believe. Or one to four. Um, and then you'll also want to be killing these one skele skeletons. And I believe there are four of them in this dungeon. Um, because they'll give you more Kari steel and they'll also give you fragments of power. So you want to come kill all of them that you come across. You'll come up here. And then on your left here, there's a bridge going across to another one. You kill this guy. More fragments of power, more Kari steel. And there are also some of these little chests here. And these ones, as opposed to Kari steel, these ones will have more fragments of power. And I believe there's up to like six that can spawn here. Continue back along here. And then you'll come across the third one skull skeleton. Kill him as well. So this dungeon is really great for farming fragments of power. You get a couple of free ones, and you get one for every one of these skeletons that you kill. Follow the path through here, and this is where the final one skeleton, uh, one skull skeleton is. And then you follow this pathway up here. Now, if you want, uh, there is a cave off to the right here, and. There is a spider queen boss, spider demon boss, um, that you can kill and harvest the skeleton key from, and you'll use that to unlock the loot chest over here. These are just normal uh, open chests, but yeah, you can loot this one for a legendary item if you want to be bothered doing it. Um, it's pretty low HP now in Age of War, so it, it's probably worth doing now. Uh, but normally you will just want to be heading up this pathway and into the final boss area. You'll come up here and then you'll get inside to this ring and you'll light all these. Don't mind my visuals, it doesn't show the flames even though there are flames. And now this spawns Thag, which is the final boss of this dungeon. And now by killing Thag, we have a chance of getting a legendary from him. Um, either Scyther Thag, Mace of Thag, or Hammer of Thag. Um, but these are a really rare drop. Um, it's a good chance you get no legendary weapon from him. But you will get Kari Steel guaranteed, and you are guaranteed to get one of the Kari uh, recipes. 
the goal of this dungeon, uh, by running it multiple times, is to get the Kari weaponry recipe. Um, and that's going to unlock the Kari bow, which is the best craftable bow in the game, and is also better than most uh, even legendary bows. Uh, the only legendary bow that outperforms it at the moment is the Reach of the Red Mother, which is really hard to farm. But yeah, with the bow maker, this is going to be your main go-to bow. Uh, and once you have a precision carpenter bench, it's going to cost you 10 Kari steel per bow. So yeah, you are going to be wanting to farm this dungeon a few times, unless you have the reserves of Kari steel already, so that you can pump out a bunch of bows, which are really strong at the moment. Now the final place that I like to farm is of course Unnamed City because this is the OG spot for legendaries. Now what I like to do, there's a Scorpion King boss over here. I like to kill him, get the Skeleton Key, unlock this chest as I head into the Unnamed City. But also there's the Silver Mine that's over here. And so it's also a good opportunity to go into the Jawbone. Um, there are a couple more three skull bosses in there that all drop skeleton keys. There's also the Queen Scorpion, which you can harvest Scorpion Queen Venom from, which is the best poison application in the game. And this is just generally a good spot for farming silver as well as more legendary items with the skeleton keys that drop. Um, and then I'll head into the unnamed city and I'll usually take this path in through here because um, we'll come across the brute here and this guy he has a chance to drop the predatory blade and the shank daggers I'll then kill the red mother dragon and this has a chance to drop the reach of the red mother and also the blade of the seven winds there will also be a Relic Fragment chest that spawns over here. Then there is this guy over here. I think his name might be the Watcher. But he'll share the same uh, loot table as the rest of the three skull skeletons here. If we go into here, there is a three skull snake boss, and uh, if it doesn't fall through the map when you kill it, you can harvest it for another skeleton key to unlock this loot chest over here. Another skeleton boss can be found over in this corner. Now this is a good opportunity to unlock the unnamed city obelisk and also come down here and get the map rooms unlocked and also spend some of your relic fragments on getting the oils and you can try your luck at some random recipes do not be afraid uh, learn can photographer and a memory of oils with five fragments of power a whisper of what once was um, you can also Before try your way at this I usually eat most of my rogue fragments so I can get more knowledge points so I'm not having to uh, respect to unlock different things all the time. And there is this guy over here. Again, same loot pool as the rest of the skeletons. I'll then go over to the aviary and this is where you'll farm uh, the vermin hide pants and vermin hide boots. And then finally in this southwest area You'll find the last three skull skeleton boss. Or white. And so there you have it. That's my early game route and then also my farming route for legendaries and resources uh, primarily. Obviously you still got to get your brimstone, uh, you still got to get your wood from somewhere, you still got to get your stone. Um, you might need to farm extra iron, coal, etc. Uh, but this is where I go for legendary farming because they are meta now. And also my high tier resources like alchemical, steel fire, iron, steel, uh, mechamosis. That's, that's where I'll get all those. Crystal is nearby. 
Brimstone is on this same route. So I'd say this is the best area of the map to be farming in Age of War. Uh, thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this useful uh, for any new or returning players. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.